Okay, the 2015 film Poltergeist. I do begin this by saying I am a very big fan of the 82 version. Being born in 79, yes, I'm old. When it came out in theaters, I didn't see it. However, back in those days, it came out in 82. It probably came out on VHS in 83, other than a very, very small town. So we might have had access to it in 84. By about 85, it would have been on HBO or the higher pay channel. By 86, 87, you're pretty close to being on basic cable. <clears throat> so by the time I was really, really into horror films, yes, so I've been watching horror films for all well, pretty close to 30 years now. So I really, really got into horror films. Poltergeist was on a lot. They did a lot of sequels. Of course, they, they filmed a few that were in, in the Chicagoland area. So there was always a Poltergeist film on. So I loved the 82 version. That being said, I understand the 2015 version. I do. Someone took a, a very good concept that at the time felt very unique. It took lots of moments from that and used it in other supernatural horror films. So I think they did a, a good job when it came to doing a remake. Do not want to call it a reboot? Because it felt like they took a tremendous amount of the same material and used it. I will say I think they ruined a couple of lines. You know. Uh, I think Sam Rockwell is an undeniably underappreciated actor. And given this role, I think Craig T. Nelson did it better. Which is saying something. There are a few moments when Rock when Sam is talking, and you can tell he's finally in the corner. He's like, something has stolen my daughter. What do I have to do? Other times he just kind of has this whole, like, yeah, the closet ate my daughter. What are we going to do? And I think they tried to pull off the, he's trying to be strong for his kids. But it just kind of, kind of felt, kind of felt kind of off. When it came to battling the spirits, Zelda Rubenstein did a phenomenal part in that, as that character. So it's, it's hard to do the follow-up for that. Did a good job, though. I think I saw him in the, he was in other supernatural horror films, so I've seen him play that role quite a few times. He's, he's good at it. But he was just missing that little something. There was no preacher beating on the door screaming, y'all are gonna die, who just looked like death incarnate. So it missed some of those really great iconic moments. But it took the majority of, of the plot. And the plot actually is a pretty simple plot. You have a family that moves into a house that they joke about, oh, it was built on a place that was a barrier ground, but they moved all the all the bodies and all that. In the original, they find out later. Craig T. Nelson is the one screaming, They move the headstones, but not the bodies. In this one, it's an offhand comment. And I was like, oh. That's such a huge part of the first movie. Then they find out, it's like there's bodies coming up in the basement. And it's just, it's a super intense moment. It's like, oh. What also hurts this film is the first had some really solid child acting. This one, everyone just kind of, I don't know if it's the fact that they're, Tweaking it more and be like, we don't want to horribly scar the child when we're doing this process. But they're just not as good. And and with a little boy, they do the, the pan around his room, and it's just full of creepy looking toys. And I was like, alright, the scene they did with the clown in this one, it's okay. It's nowhere near a match for the old one. And I think that's probably because practical effects in a horror film look a lot better than anything CGI. They did a, a bit with a drone that I liked. So it had some moments where I was like, you know what, this is a this is a very competent remake. The problem is you're updating 30-year-old source material. And from a PG-13 standpoint, it was more of the like bang scares. So it was decent. I would put it I would put it as a contemporary to the other PG-13 horror films. But the sad thing is the other film franchises that are similar, like your Sinister and your Insidious 1 and 2. And all of your Japanese films, like your like the Grudge and things of that nature, where they have a bit more going on with them. So this one, relatively consistent with the source material that's 30 years old, trying to update a contemporary, it just felt like it 
was it well, it wasn't really needed. It felt like it was one of those well to retain the rights needed to do a film, and it's competent, but that's that's really about it. It's it's watchable. It's good. It's just nothing mind blowing or amazing. Had I not have been a fan of the eighty two version, I'd probably like this one more. But I'm comparing it to to a film that I might be looking at with a, a slight rose tint.